$50 for weed trafficking. 80% recovery rate for Rona Hospital patients. Guyanese Juris appointed Belize's Chief Justice. And Guyana inspires Suriname to go big on offshore oil search. I'm Enrico Bulford, and this is Uncut News. Do you see news happening? Send us a tip on WhatsApp at 592-659-6154. On Friday, four men were remanded to prison for trafficking almost two kilograms of foreign marijuana into Guyana. 27-year-old Kevin Ramgulam, 29-year-old Mark Barton, 35-year-old Dudnath Bagwadin, and 24-year-old Erwin Chappelle pleaded not guilty to the charge, which alleged that on September 1st at Middle Street, Frideslust, East Coast Demerara, they had 1.75 kilos of cannabis in their possession for the purpose of trafficking. They were remanded to prison until the 20th of September. During a recent presidential outreach to Region 9, a resident complained that the $42.5 million passport office at Letham was completed since 2021, but it was never opened, forcing them to have to travel all the way to Georgetown to deal with passport issues. The president had promised that the office would become operable in one month's time. But one day after Kaicha News reported on the issue, and the center was reportedly open the following day. Yesterday, the Region 9 RDC posted on its Facebook page that the office is now operable. And not only that, but it was open since Monday, August 29th. Monday is one day after the president made the promise to residents during an outreach at St. Ignatius Village. The RDC welcomed the president's intervention to make the office operable within a day and describe it as a long-awaited day that came to an end. Health Minister Dr. Frank Anthony said that 80% of patients that were admitted to the Rona View Hospital recovered, meaning that 20% of the admitted patients passed away. Nevertheless, Anthony said the rate mirrors the global average. He explained, quote, so far, as of today, we would have diagnosed 71,062 cases, and of those, 69,528 have recovered. And so basically, you have a 97.8% recovery rate overall in the country. But with our hospitalized patients, we have had an 80% recovery. End quote. Since 2020, the nation has recorded a total of 1,278 deaths from the virus. Of those deaths, 741 of them were recorded at the hospital. 28-year-old fisherman Narayan Chandrio is now missing and is feared dead after lightning struck a fishing vessel in the Burbis River on Thursday night. It is believed that Chandrio was directly hit by the lightning bolt. The accident occurred during a thunderstorm near Albion on the Burbies River. His brother, Navindra, and a worker whose name was given as Rommel, told investigators that they tried looking for him but could not find him in the darkness of the night. The police have since arrested the two crew members. Now it's time to tell you about Best Buy's Car of the Week. Currently on sale is a 2016 Suzuki Jimmy Sierra four-wheel drive. It comes with regular and low-range four-wheel drive Bluetooth mug rims, no tires, TV, CD, stereo, fog lamps, but camera, and much, much more. Buy cash for $3.4 million. All pay as low as $700,000 down, with around $67,000 a month for five years, and it is yours. Call or WhatsApp 662-0844 for more info, or visit the showroom at 171 Peter Street, Queenstown, a lot to La Marshall. And tell them Mariko sent you for this video. According to 41-year-old farmer Mukesh Balkrishna of Salton Farm Quarantine, two of his cattle were stolen and slaughtered late Wednesday night. He noted that he had been rearing animals since he was a small boy, but had previously stopped because of losses suffered as a result of theft. Following the discovery, Balkrishna said he reported the matter to the number 51 police station, but up until Thursday evening, the police had not fulfilled a promise to visit the scene of the crime. On Thursday, 33-year-old Mark Royden Williams was sentenced to death for a ninth time, this time for the January 23, 2008 murder of GDF Corporal Hyvor Williams. Back in July, a jury trial in the High Court found Williams guilty of fatally shooting the soldier during a gunfight between the Feynman Gang and the disciplined forces. Williams is currently on death row for murdering eight persons during the 2008 Bartica Massacre. Today, another Nigerian national was remanded to prison for his part in another package scam. Matthew EGK Nuanchukwu of Nigeria and Wayne Anthony Haley of Linden denied that between August 20th to the 29th, they conspired with each other to defraud Njema Noble of $100,000 cash by falsely pretending that they were in a position to deliver a package to her. Nuan Chukwu was remanded to prison and 
they released Haley on $100,000 bail. The matter is adjourned until October 25th. Your home is your most valuable asset. So before you sign on the dotted line, call BJS Home Inspections. They are a licensed and insured home inspection company with professionals operating in the Bronx, Brooklyn, Queens, Long Island, and Westchester County. From electrical and plumbing issues to a leafy roof. If there's a fault in the house, VJS will find it using the latest industry technology, including infrared scanners, HD drones, and more. So if you're buying or selling a home in New York, make the smart choice. Call VJS Home Inspections at 914-513-9356 and tell them Noriko sent you. Prominent and well-respected Guyanese jurist Justice Louise Blenheim was sworn in as the Chief Justice of Belize today. Up until recently, she served as a Justice of Appeal of the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court. The Belize Bar Association recommended her to that nation's Prime Minister. Justice Blenheim has served in a variety of senior legal and judicial positions in St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Antigua and Barbuda, Anguilla, as well as being a magistrate in Guyana. In 2017, a 15-year-old boy was charged for fatally stabbing Hermant Passard, the brother of former police commissioner Seelol Passard, during a robbery at Starbrook Market. Now at age 20, he currently awaits sentencing after pleading guilty to the lesser offense of manslaughter on Thursday. He has been further remanded to prison to await his sentencing hearing, which is fixed for September 26. In closing his remarks, the accused said he recognized his wrongs and he begged the court for mercy and leniency and said he would like a chance to correct his wrongs as well as to contribute to society. Are you a truck owner? Pay close attention. Avoid lengthy downtime when your truck broke down. Get high-quality DAF, international, freight lineup, Bedford TM, or Scammel truck parts at the lowest prices at Powered Automotive. Visit them at Lot 1161 EE Eccles. Or call them on telephone number 6970171. Save big on truck parts at Powered Automotive, the number one heavy-duty truck parts store in Guyana. Now for today's oil update. While our Dutch-speaking neighbors have produced fuel onshore for years, they have yet to find commercial quantities of oil offshore. But Guyana's success offshore has renewed international as well as regional interest in their offshore blocks. In fact, Exxon has already got license to two of them and seeks to possibly gain more in the coming years. Well, not to be left out, Suriname State Oil Company Statsoily over the next five years plans to invest around US $1.5 billion into its operations, with the bulk of funds going into the development of offshore exploration. Statsoily noted, too, that the funds will also be used to develop sustainable energy projects outside of fossil fuels. This also includes researching possible downstream industries to capitalize on. The company calculated that as of last year, they have a total proven reserves of 89.1 million barrels of oil. However, Statsoily has said that seismic data pointed to an estimated 30 billion barrels of oil equivalent offshore. Currently, just 40% of Suriname's offshore oil blocks have been licensed, leaving over 60% untouched. By the fourth quarter of this year, Suriname will put up deep water blocks for auction. In 2023, another auction for shallow water blocks is planned. It might not be robbery season, but the streets are still mean. That's why you need to get security for your home and business through Sheriff Security Service. Sheriff Security offers well-trained guards, armed and unarmed patrol, marine patrol, canine services. These people even got drones. Why? Because your security is their highest priority. You've seen the rest. Now hire the best. Hire Sheriff Security Service today. Now for our uncut news, viewers poll question of the day. Every day we pose a question about current events in Ghana, the region, the diaspora, and how you feel it plays to us. Last night, I asked, how do you feel about China's interest in the region? Before we get to that, Dimitri V asked if we have a new sponsor. And to that I say, yes, you're correct. They are BJS Home Inspections. Like I've said before, we are a small but dedicated team that brings you the news every weeknight, courtesy of our sponsors. Unlike the mainstream media, we don't have an agenda to push, nor the millions of dollars in shadow funding to waste on lying to you. So we appreciate all the support we get from our sponsors. On that note, if you or anyone else watching is interested in supporting real news in Guyana through advertising, or even just a fine piece of change so I can buy some coffee, you can email us at anairaguyana at gmail.com. So back to the questions. Navindra Law says Chinese investment in the region is great for building economic growth. However, Bantu King disagrees, says China's exploitation is not economic cooperation. 
To me, Tree V actually has a nuanced approach, saying it's definitely a bit of both. The good is the heavy investment in Guyana helps the economy and bilateral relations. The bad is that the government seems to be favoring them for a lot of construction contracts, plus the most recent scandal with Jagdio. It's definitely something to monitor. Peter Hoodlist says, any investments are great for a country. For example, the influx of Chinese stores has brought prices down and raised local employment. The government needs to monitor them to ensure they are following the laws nevertheless. Spartan King says, anyone pouring abundant resources into any place is doing it for their own benefit. China doesn't have Ghana's best interests at heart, and our government should limit their influence here because right now it's like the Chinese have more rights than the Guyanese. They're here living like royalty when the ordinary man can't feed his family. Investment is good, but that coupled with too much influence is very, very bad. P.S. I think the government should reduce P.A.Y.E. by 50% and upgrade all public servants' allowances to ease the burden of the cost of living further. We have all this oil money, and they're still pressuring the populace with absurd tax deductions and outdated wages. And finally, Lorem Ipsum says, More trade with China is a good thing. It will increase wealth in both nations. The only worrying thing is the inherent corruption already endemic to our homeland. The Chinese don't try to fix corruption, they just work with what countries offer. Sweet bono? Sweet bono indeed. So, before we get to tonight's question, you can multiply your cash by selling digital top up. This is a legit way you can earn some extra money at your business or to supplement your current hustle. Look on the top of Fender quick and easy by linking with Cellular Plus. Call them on telephone number 6853109 for more info. Now for tonight's question. Suriname's government is pumping millions into their state-owned oil company to develop offshore oil exploration. Should our government do the same, or should they stay out of the oil industry? I want you to think about that question. Tell us in the comments below. If your response is good enough, we just might feature it in our next episode. Anyway, that's all the time we have for tonight, and check us out on Monday for another. Until then, I'm Rico Bullford saying, have a great weekend. And as always, don't drink and drive, or you'll end up on Monday's episode the hard way. Ha-ha! Good night, folks.